Hi, everybody. I am so excited to have you join us for this pop-up conversation today, Plexus Institute and Steve Ardair. So I, I want you to know that um, Steve and I have been friends for a long time and colleagues, and we've had numerous conversations about complexity. And so when I called him up and said, I'm doing some work with Plexus and we have these informal pop-up conversations, and I would really love to have you come and join join the group and tell us what you're doing now because Steve may be my friend, but he's really known as a strategic advisor and thinker for whatever is on the cutting or emerging edge of technology. And he has been working with artificial intelligence for several years with startups and Every time I chat with him, he goes through a list of the coolest, most interesting companies that are sort of on the horizon or are about ready to, um, you know, sort of enter the big time. And so it's always a great pleasure. And it always brings me to think about the fact that one of the things that Plexus has always done and will continue to do is to consider how our ecosystems, both social and governmental and technological, and business obviously are emerging and what can we do to sort of consider those conversations and to help the people and the human systems start to be feel more comfortable and build capacity around these emerging um, conversations and technologies. So without further ado, I am going to um, mute myself, turn this over for Steve and we will have um, an opportunity at the end to um, have our sort of informal conversations, which is sort of the highlight of the pop-up conversations. But uh, more importantly, if you have any questions or you would like to put in some information in the chat, you'll see there's a little chat button at the bottom of the screen and you are welcome to open that up. So without further ado, thank you, Steve, for joining us today. Thank you for the wonderful introduction, Denise. My name is Steve Argiri. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to taking us through this talk uh, on AI plus complexity. And um, so essentially, just to add a little bit of color to what Denise uh, uh, stated in the intro, I, I, I currently advise numerous AI startups like Seven. And uh, it sounds like it's more, some of them are just, you know, more minimal than others. So I typically come in and work with the founding team. These are early stage typical uh, startups and uh, help, you know, help them with their, uh, you know, the strategic fit, the product market fit. Invariably, most, you know, most of them are looking to raise funding. So I get involved in that and then, you know, hopefully get them funded. I'm doing that with three currently right now. And uh, then, then it's the go-to-market where the action begins with, you know, uh, customer and partner engagement. I also do a lot of speaking, uh, webinars like this, and uh, also other types of events like AI World, which is a terrific uh, conference um, in Boston. Um, and, uh, and then IBM, which I'll touch upon. So without further ado, let's just plunge in. So. Uh, <clears throat> So, you know, one of these events that I did was this um, uh, last uh, uh, September at IBM, where uh, we led off, where I led off with the uh, phrase, um, "Could you you read that in the in the in the media, you know, quite a bit right now? Data's new oil." But I said that's not quite, you know, quite right. You know, it's that's part of it, but AI is the refinery. And I have a really good backstory for this because my original career was in geology. And the fundamental skills that you learn, I did my uh, geology back east in Pennsylvania, Franklin and Marshall. And uh, when I was doing structural geology, wow, the interpretation was very difficult. We went to a field camp in the summer, I think sophomore year, where it was much more evident and i said wow a lot easier to understand the the, uh, the patterns and the illumination of this and the whole notion of translating when i went full immersion later in my career uh to machine learning it's really about matching up entities and concepts so so i uh so when you get uh when that little post there about wow <clears throat> thinking like a geologist i was all over that and they and they retweeted it so Kind of uh, a little bit. So, th so this is really kind of a intro. I kind of aggregated quite a bit of material, you know, in this slide, um, um, because really there's a lot to navigate in the 
you know, this is a nice graphic. It is kind of an AI hype storm. There's a tremendous amount of hype out there, and the big players are now dominating the, uh, the messaging. The other thing that's going on right now is everyone thinks they're an AI expert. Um, it's really egregious, and it's gotten out of control, and that's why I like the Hawking quote, okay? It's spot on, okay? There's a lot of this illusion of knowledge out there today. So you just got to go with it and, you know, do, you know, position your best. So some of the other elements on here is, yes, you need some of these, uh, you know, key elements for AI adoption. We know AI will drive the insights revolution. These are some big, uh, big, big metrics that are talking about. Um, the marketplace, the AI marketplace, this is a big number, 70 billion by, you know, you know, in like four years, and every application is trending, you know, to become intelligent. Uh, there's, uh, there's clearly, and we'll talk about this, these are just little cutouts that I'll amplify as we get into the presentation more, but the, one of the biggest one that, of course, really relates to this uh, webinar is redefining management. Wow, wait until, you know, so basically the two takeaways is machines can attend to vastly more information and complex processes than human beings. But the, uh, rather than just replacing, I mean, um, many jobs will be automated, but this will drive human capital to high order, non-routine cognitive creative work. So yes, um, so uh, you can see that Gardner quote, you know, more than 3 million workers, you know, by 20, you know, this year purportedly be supervised. And uh, somebody tweeted this thing, I loved it so much, that they had that little byline, condensating white man and uh and uh has some interesting issues but the the biggest takeaway okay is really it's really all of this is really about augmented intelligence where machines and humans work together and this is this is something i've been uh proselytizing myself for a few years and now every ceo you know likes to talk. i don't even use the cliche democratizing ai you know or um because everybody wants to kind of like, you know, convey that in terms of what their efforts are. But it really, it's the, one of the big takeaways here is clearly augmented intelligence, okay? So, so why this is really driving is this is a big number when you're over 15 trillion of global GDP gains and, you know, by 2030. And you can, I'm not going to read you the metrics on the left, but just digest that, you know, for a little bit on your own. And you can just see that why AI is, is really trending for greater than 30% of CIOs, CDOs. And the other implication, and I, you know, I've talked about this more, this is just really just one slide, is I think it's really a global playing field now where the AI have will pull it ahead of the have not. And when you look at that graphic there, right, you're seeing China double you, you know, North America, um, some, some big aims here. So uh, for, for those that are not paying as close attention, uh, China is already head of the U.S. in, in, in AI research. And they're, they're doing, um, you know, in terms of the, you know, you have 800 million internet users. They're using their phones way more, okay, for, uh, than America and other parts of the world. And give you a metric. They do about eight trillion through mobile payments in 2017, which is about 50 times what Americans do. Wow, that's really mind-boggling. So the other thing about it is that uh, China now rivals the the U.S. and D.C. investment. So a lot of interesting implications. Okay. All right. So what's going on, you know, with companies now? They're they're literally, you know, reimagining business processes with algorithms, right? And you're seeing a number of things there where they're creating, um, you know, you know, it's really, you know, it's A to Z in terms of the, uh, the use cases. So, so again, right, machines attend to, you know, what I said earlier. And, um, and there's a number of implications here. There's a top line performance, right, where you're getting improvements through more timely, you know, predictive, relevant data to employees, right? There's a bottom line performance, 
where uh, using certain processes, you can reduce you know, costs, not just human costs, but other types of operational costs, OPEX, things of that nature, right? And then the other one I would put in the bucket is, is customer satisfaction and engagement. So, so you're now with, you know, it's, you know being led by chatbots, right? Um, they're becoming more sophisticated and other types of methods as well that are being teased into the mix, okay? Okay, so, but there's still, uh, this, is a, this is a company that, that I advise out of New York. So, so big data really is being, you know, um, uh, transcended by AI. And, and the thing about it, and we came up with this uh, byline um, a little over a year ago, is that today's AI can provide, you know, pretty much, you know, some degree of the who, what, where, when, and how, but not the why. And the why is really, really the holy grail because causal reasoning, which is also common sense AI, this is where it allows you to fix, you know, to go beyond, you know, correlation of the root causes, right? To address things like, okay, what did we do? Did it work? What were the implications of that? And where you can actually have context of actions along with more of the behavioral understanding. Because the bottom line is this, without common sense will never truly have you know intelligent machines and there's a lot of investment going into this by you know by the big players some other types of clever you know startups and the thing about as far as uh you know um uh the implication to uh to complexity space is outlined here so this is where i took denise's work okay uh and try to compress it no easy feat into into a slide here in terms of 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 how these ecosystems fuse together. She's positing some nice questions there, um, you know, focusing on influencing patterns, development, learning, and change. Right. So the net net of this whole exercise is that you can accelerate pattern based changeability, doing things faster, better, smarter, by by weaving in you know AI. Okay. So the whole thing is, is this will help, you know, build a, a more uh, robust, hopefully, depending on the, the makeup of the organization. But you, you're, it's trending towards adaptive leadership, aligning the organization where, um, where you can actually have a more, you know, a, a, uh, a more rapid escalation to where, um, you can you can manage the uh, you know the complexity space implication similar to this post that Denise just um, which, which is a marvelous post the seeking perfect goals in a, in a in an imperfect world right so uh, the point of this is I gave some uh, not to be uh, glib about it but you know um, yeah I mean the, the the graphic on the left in terms of the definitions I kind of like enhance it because I literally agree about it. So, so, so uh, uh, had a little reverb from somebody there. So, uh, so really, what with the AI, just to break it down, um, is there's you know, most of the AI out there today is 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 weaker AI or narrow AI. You basically, I mean, this is like our assistants, you know, Siri, Cortana, you know, uh, Google Now, etc. Right. Uh, and then you're doing what I call one-off solutions. So things like anomaly detection or, you know, or, or doing in like in healthcare, radiology. I mean, vision recognition is very robust, you know. And, but what we're moving from that into more AGI where the whole, the, you know, the whole effort right now is where you can learn continuously, right? You can answer any question based on that. And that's really where the most of the of the current research, you know, is 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 going on right now. It's to open it up into more robust, you know, comprehensive solutions rather than just narrow ones. And then strong AI, we're not, you know, we have quite a ways to go there. I mean, this is getting into sentience and so forth. And I, and uh, and uh, and that's why I use, you know, we're not quite there, you know, using I think therefore I am. But we're, you know, I, I'm not even going to make uh, an effort to estimate when we're going to get there. But I also want to make a comment, um, kind of like a, a, a segue of sorts, is that you don't need a brain to learn. And these are slime molds. 
I mean, it's really amazing what nature in terms of, and we know in the whole notion with ants and, you know, bees and, and, uh, and that type of swarm intelligence, right? It's really pretty amazing. And the funny thing about it in this is scientists are a bit hazy how this works, but it does. It, you know, with this thing is navigating obstacles. So, so, uh, so here's really a little bit more color and breakdown <clears throat> on, um, on the types of AI, okay? So really, most of the stuff out there today is, is type one and type two, um, okay? It's in a reactive limited memory. The, where, where a lot of work is going on right now is really in type three, which is uh, your understanding, you know, like I said, you know, information, you're learning from that. You're also bringing in um, emotion. And I make the supposition because I'm I, three of my startups are very much involved uh, in or, uh, in emotional intelligence, and I really think that's really one of the big areas going forward, uh, along with um, you know augmented intelligence, where you can do this unbiased self-organizing, right? And this is getting into mimicking emergent systems, right, which dovetails with complexity. And you can, you know, this is where you, rather than just learning in a secular domain, you can learn in different domains at the same time and transfer skills, right? We're still a long way from type four. This is, this is where I said I'm not even going to make a, you know, prognostication, but it will be more brain inspired, you know, AGI where, you know, you're merging and there's a lot of developments in neuromorphic chipsets where you can actually create these artificial brains and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. So all of this now is really heading to the, uh, the rise of, of emergent organizations. And, and frankly, I really, this post at Beth Kahn's talk um, uh, with GE, the vice chairman, really was a fantastic post. So I'm gonna spend a little, little time on this because she's right. She's right on these, uh, on these uh, this mimicking emergent systems in nature and everything will flow from that, right? So she has these six points where, you know, she's talking about, you know, uh, and all of this should be familiar to everybody, right, is, uh, and I'm, not, I'm just going to add, so she's saying in the first one, organizing around information flows, right, is, you know, this is where adaptive business culture and open communication begin. And, um, and then as far as empowering, number two, right, really empower them. Uh, you know, and this is the illusion out there of, you know, of, of, of too much control and, you know, in terms of the top down mentality or the hierarchical men mentality. And I can, the third one was kind of interesting where she's just not saying modus operandi. She means mission, objective, mindset, orientation. Good stuff. Good stuff there. Four is very, very, it's sort of like, you know, the, you know, living in between, which is, you know, this really abandons the idea where no one really has the all-encompassing total knowledge, right? This is where you, this really kind of ties to the, the first point on empowering, right? Organizing around information flows. And also, you know, opening up uh, uh, feedback loops, right? So, so it, in theory, as, we, as you know, and there's great practitioners on this call, right? Information or flow is typically obstructed by bureaucracy or managers who want to protect their, you know, their little systems, right? So the other thing about it, and I, I do this, you know, I mean, in startups, believe me, failure is, you know, nine out of 10 startups fail. So, so you know, if you don't, it's really a symptomatic of, of organizational health. And, uh, and you got, you know, the feedback really is, you know, creates that immune, you know, immune response to change, right? So tap into the power. This is probably her weakest one because she was talking about simulation because that's what GE does. But, uh, but she had some good points there. And that's really where you really not, you know, this is the whole notion of, of the, the theme of the, of the AI and complexity where you really need to tap into. This is the augmented intelligence uh, trigger. Okay, and he has this little cool uh, GIF file there. Okay, so um, so this was an interesting slide as far as what's going on, you know, out there in terms of the type of networks that really maps to complexity theory, right? So the random network versus scale-free network versus in between, right? I'm not going to spend a lot of time this because we don't have the time, but the point of it is is uh, 
these are the types of methods out there, you know, and, um, and what, you know, what, uh, you know, what's, uh, I don't think there's, you know, whatever works for the given, you know, task at hand. Um, uh, I think uh, the comment to, to really nail this here, uh, the corollary to that previous slide is this one right here. There's really scant, you know, uh, evidence of power loss on the real world network. So, so the interesting thing about this is, uh, you know, it's intended as an ideal mo uh, idealized model, but you know, there's a lot of uh, um, you know randomness in you know in these connected hubs that don't you know ob observe a strict power law. So depending on the previous slide, uh, you're really going to come down to best fit to where you know you know for the for the thing for the you know for the task at hand. So this was kind of interesting about, you know, chaos and the future work is, you know, is it chaos? Uh, interesting mix here, um, this, the author, Claire Birds, I put across here. Um, it kind of, you know, I, I've been using, you know, uh, as I'm sure some of you, you know, this whole notion of organized chaos, right? So, so that's really, you know, it's kind of nonlinear. I mean, that's where nonlinear careers are really are becoming more and more de rigor these days because uh, that's, you know, the, between the interruptions, the speed, you know, of information delivery, there's a lot of dynamics going on. Okay. So I like this graphic. Twelve, you know, uh, twelve ways to uh, to get smarter. It's, it's a very rich graphic. You really have to digest this, but I'm just going to point to what I really think is the, the real takeaway from this is learning how to learn, being a curious lifelong learner. This really allows you to do, you know, the best critical thinking judgment with firepower. Uh, I can attest to this as a lifelong learner. Um, boy, you just have to be, you know, you've got to be, you know, like, you know, doing your regular exercise and eating well. And so this is really healthy mind, healthy body. But some really, I think this is what um, going forward more, you know, more people when I talk to, you know, uh, young millennials and so forth, they say, how do you, how do you stay on top of it? Well, I know how to learn and I practice it religiously. Okay. So a little bit more implications on this. I kind of, you know, in the first slide, talk about, you know, every application, but I wanted to really point to uh, this, this HBR article. I was shocked when I came across this. 20 to 35% of value-added collaborations come from just three to 5% of employees. Begs the question, what the hell do these other, you know, sizable percentage of employees do at global 2000 companies. This is ridiculous, right? So there, there lies wide machines. I mean, if there, if there, you know, if there's only a very small, you know, percentage, right? That's why machines will emerge <laughs> as the top collaborators. And it's just me, this, uh, this uh, survey from CIO Insight kind of validated 87%. So they would trust the advice of intelligence systems and they've got the metrics to prove that, right? So pretty, pretty shocking. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so what, what, what is this, you know, I kind of like the, the frame on this because it really, it's really a way, because it's really, you know, all different areas, right, of AI infused expert augmentation, you know, software here, right? So, uh, so everything from HR to investment, wealth management, trading, you know, lawyers, et cetera. Um, the whole point of these systems, right, is, is helping to do these complex tasks that are either beyond, you know, human cognition or inefficient for, you know, for humans to do on their own, right? So the implications of this is, yes, it isn't just a threat. It's, it's not just the blue collar and the, you know, the cognitive man, you know, routine. It's white collar workers. So you've got lawyers, consultants, financial advisors, journalists, and we're all you know, um, be tapped, you know, uh, with this whole notion of these e, uh, uh, e -A -E -A -S systems here. So, but again, it really comes full circle to what my mantra has been. It's, it's all about aug uh, augmented intelligence going forward. So, 
So I kind of like this graphic I've used it before in terms of, of four kinds of work in the future. I've always prided myself on being the upper right hand, you know, not Uber, the, you know, the car, the car share service, but Uber empowered, right? The type of work, right? So, so, but you can see in that bucket there, um, also the, the lower right hand quadrant, turbocharge. I really think the Uber empowered is really if you're doing stuff like me as a solo consultant versus turbocharge where you're full time you know, with the right company as, you know, I think the, the, the Uber empowered and the turbo charge is where we're really going. Uh, work reimagine. Yeah. Kind of, kind of gets there, but the current, the whole point of the, that, the current state, uh, traditional, that's, you know, you're going to be vectored out of that. And, um, I think that's what really is empowering, you know, the work, the workplace of the future, you know, going forward here. So I promise to, to tap into uh, redefining management. And this has a lot of implications here, right? So you can see the breakdown in terms of how managers spend their time, right? And the takeaway from that are those five points below the graphic there, right? Um, I love, yeah, uh, I love number two, focus on the judgment, because that's really where you're getting into the critical thinking. We talked about the colleagues, right? You know, develop, you know, better communication, you know, skills, right? So, uh, so, uh, and the other thing about it, and, you know, yes, we talked about, you know, your next boss could run on code, but, but I think going forward, um, the definition of, of what it means to be smart is, is changing radically. So it's really, it's really more the ones that are going to rise to the top are, you know, the open-minded communicators. You know, the ones that do critical thinking and judgment, creativity, those are the ones that, you know, where um, we're going to elevate. And as far as strategy, this is interesting as well, you know. Um, but we shouldn't be complacent about the dominance as, you know, for, you know, going forward here. That's often going to be tapped into. In fact, there are some companies that actually put an AI in the boardroom, and that's become, you'll see more of that going forward, right? So I couldn't resist. This is a recent article from The Guardian about, you know, how difficult it is to grim reality of job hunting in the AI age, right? So, so okay, I do defer. Yes, it is a problem, but my comeback, okay, was essentially this, okay, is buck up, because the future is about imagination, creative, and strategy, right, and I've used this quote, I use it a lot, um, so as, as machine intelligence, you know, improves, human prediction skills decrease, so therein lies the notion of the value is in the critical thinking and judgment, right, and I, I took Drucker, you know, according to his thinking, I've read, I'm sure most of you, a lot of his books back, you know, in the past, um, uh, according to his thinking, effectiveness should be a human pursuit by efficiency, while efficiency should be delegated to machines, okay? And, what, and a big part of that is cognitive bias. Wow, this is a loaded slide here, okay? So the whole point of it is, this is one of the big areas, by the way, you know, because you're actually encoding bias into the machine, you know, learning, you know, the training and the algorithms, right? And there's a big, big, you know, contention about this is how do you eliminate, like in a beauty contest that was skewed towards, you know, white Caucasians at the expense of the other demographic groups. That's one of many, many examples out there. But the point of, of, of this thing is, you know, mental mistakes, you know, happen quickly, it can hamper, you know, the organization reading, reaching its full potential, right? So, so you've got financial, social biases, short-term biases, failure to estimate biases. So part of this is, uh, this is another interesting, I love this, this graphic on cognitive bias index. Again, you could spend a whole webinar on, on this as well. And uh, this little podcast on the left side there was kind of interesting. And I said, could AI ethics become superior to units? I, and then I came back and that in the lower uh, left hand quadrant um, is, yeah, perhaps if AI ethics could address every single cognitive bias in this infographics, it, it definitely, it definitely has a chance. And, um, but the thing, you know, uh, there's, you know, some, some people like uh, Dame Wendy, um, Wendy uh, at the University of Southampton talks about, 
uh, it's, yeah, the growing role of AI in our lives is too, too important to leave to men. And, uh, and really today, you know, most of the AI are still black box systems. Data goes in, the answer comes out without explanation. Okay, and that's, you know, that's a big hot area right now, explainable AI. And, uh, you know, we're not gonna solve this, you know, immediately, but there's a number of approaches out there that are moving into the right uh, direction to, uh, to address this. So, uh, so I had to put in these, because um, uh, they're nice little quotes, right, about, you know, you know, when you stop learning, that's what happens. Creative intelligence is fun. If you obey the rules, like Catherine Hepburn, you miss all the fun. And uh, some people say, well, I might not report in five years. Okay. So, uh, so on my closing slide here, and we'll have like uh, 20, yeah, actually more than that. I, went, I stepped through this pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, so in, um, in, uh, in two, well, actually about two weeks, I'll be down doing at a IBM Think, which is their new big mega conference. And this is their little promo that they did for, uh, for me. And I'll be speaking on this topic here, which, uh, which is again, um, you know, the meme that I'm taking here on men intelligence is a new way forward. And we'll use some of these slides with a bunch of additional ones as well. So, so that's what I have for you today. Denise, back to you. Thank you. Um, wow. Okay. Uh, we could, if you'd like, fabulous. Leave this slide up just for a few minutes, so um, so folks can just you know write down what they need to write down. But more importantly, I did get several requests to share the slides, so um, I can send them out to everybody. Uh, or if you have a link where people can can get some of you know can download them, that would be terrific too. But this is amazing. Um, is that going to be okay? Yeah, I'll send them to oh, you, sure. and you can you can, perfect. Yeah, I'll yeah I'll, I will link them on the on the Plexus yeah. site. Perfect. I'll make a slide share, and then you can take it from there. Fabulous. Yeah. That's wonderful. So you could go back to stop sharing your screen, and okay. then um, and then anybody who would like to. Uh, you know, ask a question can jump in, but let me, um, oh, so there we are, here, here are our folks, so you can unmute yourself. But I did want to um, just share a few comments that, that, that came up. One of them was somebody's, somebody, um, I think it was um, Patrick, who has been working with uh, developing sort of a framework for um, emergent organizations, emergent OD, um, terrific, terrific person and thinker. And he said, I need, I need an AI company to help me um, translate some of this. So anyway, I'm just putting that out there. So who knows what's going to emerge from this conversation. But one of the things, <laughs> yay, but one of the things that um, I believe it was Stuart, and I'm looking down here because there were quite a few comments. Um, oh, yes. Okay. So um, I could probably let Stuart, um, sorry. I could let Stuart ask the question, but his, his comment was, was um, how do we actively and intentionally create these networks designed versus being able to better describe what we observe, emergent? Maybe uh, AI can help us with better design. So there was a little bit of conversation around there. So versus me just reading them, if anybody would like to jump in, please feel free to do so, and I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Oh, Steve, hi. Steve, thank you very much. My name is Patrick Treche. I'm up in Vancouver, BC. Uh, thank you very much for your time. That was an excellent, lot of information to take in. Um, just want to say it, it fits 110% from what I'm doing. I'm not an AI guy. I'm not a software guy. I work with organizations in guard, regards to change, which these days I have no idea what that actual word means because it's used <laughs> in so many ways so i do work right. with emergent change mm -hmm. and and um i put a lot of uh, some i'm starting to put videos about my thoughts and my work uh i'm just really ignorant about ai although i put it in there because i work with uh, i'm creating this platform for for um integrated pattern display interfaces because the brain works as a hologram mm -hmm. 
and we have information overload this phrase but it's really not information overload it's how the pat the information is displayed so the pattern can understand it uh, more effectively and quicker uh, this affects strategies decision makings problem solving etc cetera, etc cetera, of which I call pattern thinking so my request is, can I send a small video to you so you can overlook my work and maybe we can have a chat in order to say, hey, yeah, there's some parallel development here in which you're thinking, Steve, and my thinking, and maybe you can mentor me a bit around how to bring and who to bring and what to bring in AI into this uh, uh, emergent uh, organizational development platform. So I'm looking sure. for an AI person. Your thoughts parallel mine specifically. So okay, is perfect. that okay if I, I got yeah, your fact, email there's my, Yeah, there's my, I just put it in the chat window uh, again. So yeah, send that over. I, you know, I do quite a bit of this, you know, out of yeah. graciousness. Uh, and, uh, but no, I, I'll be happy to take a look at that. And, 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 you know, having material like this will allow me to, you know, to, you know, to wrap my mind around it very, very quickly. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So, I really appreciate yeah, absolutely, it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I recognize some other names here. Hi, Alex and Bob Hayes and, uh, and Giselle. And that's who I know. Okay. <laughs> exactly. And I'm just going to jump in. Thanks, Patrick. That was a, it, a great request. But I think one of the things that um, the Plexus Network really affords and the reason why we've been having these pop-ups is to find out so if anybody else is thinking and working in that in that domain or have questions that are emerging around how to how to how to look at the work that you're doing and maybe have it augmented and supported by ai in whatever configuration so i mean that that comment in and of itself is a little bit insane but um, please, you know, please feel free to reach out to each other. So if anyone else is interested in the conversation that Patrick and Steve, um, and I'm all about pattern recognition and, and how we understand and look at our organization. So I hope that I could be part of that as well. Please, you know, please feel free to connect because it could become a, you know, a plexus, you know, a, a greater conversation or a project. So um, you never know who's working on what. So I'm going to mute myself again and then encourage other people to ask any other questions, um, share any other, you know, any other insights. And thank you, Alex and Giselle and Bob, for um, for being here today. I don't know you. This may be your first Plexus uh, event. So please feel free to let us know what you're doing in, in the world of AI, if that's where you know Steve from. So I'm going to mute myself now. I'll just go through some of the questions here to kind of, you know, kick things off here. Um, so I saw a comment, if she's still on, uh, Barbara, Barb Siegel, about using the arts. There's a lot of work in this about understanding, you know, and this is through sensor technology. And I actually did a, um, I was a co MC for uh, uh, AI Showbiz, which was the fusion of uh, AI and entertainment. And a lot of that material was talking about AR. AR is augmented reality or mixed reality. And you're seeing that now, you know, in virtual reality is where you have, you're like fully immersed and where you have to put on like a, you know, a headset. But I think AR is really starting to transcend and it's actually being built into uh, browsers. And you're seeing, you know, things like the uh, Unity 3D engine, which is the number one gaming engine, really start to really, uh, you know, elevate in terms of the implications there. So I just wanted to comment on that. Uh, a bit. Uh, Any other questions? Go ahead. No, thanks, Steve. Yes, actually, I've walked through some AR um, rea uh, virtual reality environments that were drawn to reflect conversations as they were happening in real time. And they were fascinating uh -huh. because you could physically move to the part of the conversation that fascinated you and reconsider ideas. Um, but my, my particular emphasis has been on reconnecting emotion back into the workspace since human motivation is a, an emotional um, thing and not 
not going to be, people are not going to be motivated by facts provided by anyone. They're going to be right. motivated by their emotions. And so how do like we how motivate do it? Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so one of my engagements is this company called Robbie.ai, which actually um, uh, reads emotions through cameras. Any, 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 you know, any camera in the real world. So it isn't just a controlled environment like players like Affectiva does. So Robbie AI now is uh, is deployed at some hotel groups. Uh, they were just at the Mobile World Congress uh, in uh, Barcelona last week. And uh, it's an interesting play here is to be able to really, you know, when you're going into the real world, whether it be a hotel or event, you can actually, and it's articulated on their website, you can actually, uh, the whole point of there is to, you know, is to do the easier things like automating the check-in with because that has a facial recognition. But more importantly, it allows the staff to intervene real time. So if they see, they have mapped some of the sub emotion groups in there, in addition to things, and they can see things like frustration or boredom, and then you can actually uh, uh, intervene there and try to address those issues here. So, uh, so it's a very interesting play. Yeah. So you should take a look at Robbie.ai. Steve, Patrick again. If I may, yeah. is there anybody doing any work around real-time information feedback streams? So say you're a Ed at work. Mm -hmm. And so two things that Ed can create a customized dashboard to get multiple integrated information streams that tells them about finance, marketing, uh, production, operations, whatever that person chooses to understand the organization around. So he understands his contribution, but he also understands the relationship between these different functions that traditionally have been boxed in by a, an industrial hierarchy structure. Right, and that's really, Patrick, what I was talking about this, yeah. uh, the AI infuse uh, 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 automation and augmentation software. That's exactly what these systems, uh, whether they're doing it for marketing purposes, HR, legal, you know, uh, there's right. a big play in well, you know, investment managers for wealth management. This is really what is galvanizing the effort to really address essentially what you're, you know, you're stating there. This gets us out of just a narrow, you know, AI one-off type of things into much more comprehensive solutions where you can actually sort of like do, you know, 360 or situational analysis, you know, and, and you know, near real time. So that, this is the whole, that's why I included that slide. That's exactly right. Excellent. So, uh, yep. Let's take this thought a step further. AI can actually be a facilitator in a way, depending how it's designed, to facilitate and manifest moving away from the old hierarchical structures into collaborative networks. Totally. Of which, right now, that's how the informal organization works. Right. That's, uh, right. that's how they survive. People survive and uh -huh. get rid of the boxes. It actually, it starts moving towards what I call self-forming agents, both on the I mean, technology side, but on the human side also. No, it does. In fact, uh, you know, there are instantiations of that where, you know, the agents or multi-agent technology, things like uh, ambient intelligence, you know, there's mm -hmm. a plethora of work being done but just by sensors, right? Right. You know, out there in the real world that help you, you know, better understand what's, and it has, you know, it also really, you know, I'm going to go back to the ComSec slide, the rise of emergent organization. She really right. nailed it right there. I mean, that was like loaded where, you know, you start with changing how you communicate, everything will flow from that. And so that list that she really breaks down, you know, and then going forward, the emergent organizations, you know, now that we actually have the AI, they're the ones that are going to elevate and rise to the top. They're going to be the momentum plays and, and attracting people that are more suited to that, where you don't have these, you know, layers of hierarchy. And, and I really, it's really also setting up the basis, like, why do you need all these levels out there? If you're a, you know, VP or above, right, and you're not adding value, what are you doing there? Yep. I agree. And it also breaks down that old parent-child management to employee. Totally. 
and totally. and an amazing revolution may happen. People may become people again. <laughs> Is it, wouldn't that be great? Oh, really? I mean, it's interesting. Is that because uh, you know I I haven't had a you know W two in a long time. So I, <laughs> it's been a long time, but really, it's really getting into, like they say, you know, the gig economy, depending on what your role is, right? Yeah. Is that you just come together for, you know, the need, the cause, and then just move on to the next gig. And I think that is, we're training. See how, see how simple it is? Yeah. I've always defined organizations as, as simply as people getting together to achieve something. Other right, than that, right. it's, most, it's mostly bullshit. <laughs> If I may say that, uh, Plexus. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I you love know, it. you know the whole trend from the industrial revolution and all that, and now we're in right. a whole new revolution of thinking. Totally. And and um, you know, I identify four or five things that are manifesting this revolution. AI being one of them, but just generational thinking. It is. I totally you know? agree. Yep. Anyway, thank you for your time. You're We're going to have some good conversations, I think. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. So uh, did, uh, we have, uh, I guess, you know, up to 10 minutes left if we, we need it. We do if we need it. If there are any other, this is uh, it's terrific. I, I have this feeling that everybody's sitting here thinking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to look at those slides again, and I want to be able to sort of digest them. But, um, oops, I think somebody just put in a oh. comment. Okay, Giselle. Okay, terrific. Yeah. Hi, Giselle. Yes, I'm familiar with, yeah. I didn't know about that subgroup, though, um, the RIF subgroup. That's, explain that, that one, Giselle. Are you there, Giselle? You can unmute yourself, Giselle, if you'd like. I was trying to unmute you. I'm not sure. You may not. Oh, yeah, she's muted. OK, yeah. you're muted. But if you unmute yourself, mm -hmm. it doesn't look like I can do it for you. So I apologize. Um, you may, oh, you're having trouble with your microphone. Oh, as we read this. Yeah, but so a lot. Yeah, I'm familiar with. Uh, I didn't know this particular subgroup, but you're you're right about the IEEE. You know, I know other people mm -hmm. that are involved with this, and it's it's a bit. It's one of the bigger initiatives. I don't know if it's the biggest one, but I know it's it's a sizable one. And this is really key: the addressing the ethical concerns. I, didn't, I wasn't familiar about the subgroup here that you the the risk the P seven thousand. That's what the question I had for. But unfortunately, she has trouble with her mic. Right. Uh, and I, um, I guess a question I have, which is great. And I'm sorry you have trouble with your mic because I'd love to, I really would love to hear, to hear more because it's sort of an, an, having to type it all is problematic. But um, she has the link know, in there. Yeah. Right. She, you do have the link in there. And yeah. maybe you'll be able to share at some point some more information. The question, and you may be able to answer this though, um, if from an ethical standpoint, um, are you talking about the the ethics from you know the human systems, the social cultural perspective, or uh, if you could just share a tiny little bit more about that? I you know I sort of appreciate um, how that guidance is because I do think I think, what, I think what she was addressing a couple of my slides had this right. So really, you know, the whole contention of these initiatives, IEEE is you know and others, is developing mechanisms for algorithms to filter out biases and building ethics in the AI, which is why I had that, you know, kind of, you know, interesting slide there at the, at the end. Could AI ethics be, you know, conceived with a cognitive bias, you know, graphic there? Mm -hmm. It really poses an interesting question, right, in terms of potential implications there. And, uh, and that's, that's really some of the work right now is, you know, how researchers are trying to, you know, prevent the AI from being racist and, uh, and bias. And, uh, and this is a big, big area of, of research going forward. Mm -hmm. it, per precisely. And it will be interesting because I think that there, you know, it's the, some, to some extent, some of the, the hidden cognitive behaviors within, uh -huh. the, within the people, so to speak, that they're exactly. not even aware of. And I had, typed in earlier, but one yeah. of the interesting things about Roby is the fact that if we can start to use that 
type mm -hmm. of intelligence to be able to, to have greater self-awareness or yep. team awareness. Um, I think that will go a long way into um, better understanding how those biases occur and then potentially how we can start to address them. Um, now, it would be nice to think, and I say this with a little bit of uh, hesitation, be nice to think that this whole process will make us better human beings. Um, right. <laughs> um, because, right. you know, we're great, we're great, but we still, we still sometimes don't live up to our potential. Exactly, exactly. And, uh, and really, I mean, the inherence of social, economic, cultural biases, I mean, my, you know, I mean, we see it, you know, every day in this, in this, and I even hate it anymore, this, this fake news. Stuff. But that's where, where, you know, how do you really cut through, you know, and it's being perpetuated by the big players out there, right? Facebook's getting slammed and others, and I'm not just picking on them. But that's really, the thing about it is that, you know, most people just, you know, are living in their own little, you know, domains and they're not really, you know, they don't have time to really, and it's more than just fact checking. It's sort of like this stuff is being interleaved and ingrained, you know, in, into an information stream. And the, um, and it really kind of fuels existing biases rather than kind of like opening up you know, the spectrum to like new ideas and thinking. So, so that's why I think Giselle put up there, this is a big, big hot area. Definitely for AI really to be this pervasive, like I outlined to be, this has, this is a must have to be addressed for sure. Ab absolutely. And so that should be um, music to the ears of everybody who is working. <laughs> <laughs> working, working in those systems who, who really is, um, you know, thinking about, you know, the dynamics between people and people and people and machines and people and their, and their own ecosystems. Um, it's just cool. Really cool. Um, so yes, you're going to be hearing from me, Steve, but um, <laughs> <laughs> also I'll, for other get the, people I get the, uh, I'll get the slide share to you and you can, you know, you can, uh, you can uh, distribute that accordingly to the attendees from the great from and the and thank today. you so uh, about every six months i i reach out to to steve to ask you know okay so fill me in on what the things i need to know about today are <laughs> so i'm making this really public maybe every six months we can get an hour of his time so he can share the things that we need to know about today but um sure really no really appreciate this and if there's any final questions now is your opportunity to uh ask them we will the whole session is recorded and so there'll be lots of opportunity for people to to you know listen to it and think about it and share it within your network so really appreciate that i'm going to say thank you um if somebody has a question i'll end with that and then i will stop the recording always a pleasure steve thank you denise enjoyed it it's nice meeting everybody Bye-bye.